pieces with other doctrines and they're left wounded and half dead their clothing's gone the covering that we got to have which is Christ and, and those things and uh, we need to be reminded of what we need how we need to help others if we see them in such a place and be not as the priest or the Levite not just a form of godliness and I am the power thereof, because if we have God, we will help one another. We'll love one another. If we love God, as the uh, lawyer had said there, you know, what, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said, what, what's that law say? You know, what was it telling and, and so on. So anyhow, so we need to be reminded from time to time. And here, I guess, is another reminder of things of the value of life and you know in the last many years most of all of my life I guess I should say the latter 30 or 40 years of my life anyway uh, you look at it we have very rapidly uh, moved away from the sanctity of life we have moved away and speaking of the natural now we've moved away from that, not only then of the natural life that we want, it seems like, unless people are living what we would say a charmed life, successful, what we determine successful life, we've made it in society, you've made your mark on society, you've got a big bank account and a home or two, and cars galore, and toys galore, and all this kind of stuff, then you, you just ain't you ain't with it. And, you know, and if you can't perform those things, then your life ain't worth much. Quality of life. And when we get older, you can't contribute to society any longer. So, therefore, why should you remain here? I mean, that's our attitude. That's the way it's been now for a long time. Not that it hasn't been before, but it has grown rapidly more and more and more. So then on the other hand, in the spiritual thing, it's, it's sort of like the sanctity of life, that we can have life any way we want it, spiritual, and you can. There's only one way to have true eternal life. Yeah. Only one way. Right. Can't have it any other way. I don't care how good you are or how good we think we are. Yeah. You cannot have eternal life without Jesus Christ. That's, right. That's the sum of it, you mm -hmm. can say Message in you, right there. Yeah. That's it. That's right. You've got to have Jesus Christ. Can't have anything before him. Can't have anything added to him. Can't take away anything. That which is of Christ. It's got to be a Christ, in Christ. He said, unless you believe I am me, there's something you will do. You right. will die in your sin. Mm -hmm. And where I am, you cannot come. So in Luke 12, let's start reading just a little bit. It says, in the meantime, when there are were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people. I'm talking about, man, it must have been a crowd. Yeah. And so much that they trod uh, uh, one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, mm -hmm. so if judgment begin work at, the house at us, okay? Where there. will the sinner and ungodly yeah. appear? So we have got to understand, because if we do not understand, how can we expect to be able to tell the multitudes and whoever right. might come and have a question. Right. So he says to first of all, to them, beware ye of the leaven of the 
Pharisees. Mm -hmm. There is the religious out here oh, that man. looks like mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, will pretty much convince you, and that's kind of goes along with the message uh, last Sunday that one left from Jerusalem and headed off to Jericho. Yeah, that's right. And fell among the thieves, fell the place because Pharisees said, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. You gotta watch out. Is it now hypocrisy says on something when they're not? Right. And do this and do that. They'll they'll say for you to do things, but they themselves will not. That's right. And they say that they are, but they live not that way. As Christ put it in many ways, they have ears, but they hear not. That's right. They have eyes, but they see not. They have mouths, but they don't speak. They sp speak perverse things, yes, going against the ways of God. For there is nothing covered. Now, we re in religion, we can think. He said, if a man, true religion is this. He said that if what we need to do is we need to learn how to brighten our tongue. Absolutely. Huh? Amen. He tells us Amen. about how to be a pure religion. Yeah, Visit right. the widows and the orphans in their afflictions. Keep ourselves what? Unspotted. Unspotted. From where? The world. The world. Yeah. Well, you say, you mean I can't go out here? Well, you're, you're, you drove here, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're here, this material and stuff here, what we look at, he's talking about the world. He's yeah, talking about yeah. the religious world. He's talking about a place. He's not talking about the trees and the plants. And that's a different word. That's right. God, I believe God looks at those things and they're beautiful. That's right. Even where we think might be ugly. Mm -hmm. it, to him it's beautiful. Because we don't know the whole purpose of what every little thing is here upon the earth, but God does. Agreed. So he said, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Mm -hmm. So he, he said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And we're talking about then this thing of life and the value of life. And so of things he said, there's nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. It's going to be brought out. Right. Brought Sometimes out. I believe it's brought out in the here and now. Yeah. But there are many things that people seem to think that they have kept secret all of their life and think, well, nobody, here I am. I did this when I was 20 years old and... Nobody ever found out about it, and now here I am, 78 years old, and it really don't matter. It's still recorded. It's still there in heaven. It's still there, the deeds that we have done. So what do we do? Unless we get forgiveness of that, what we done back then, you know, and, and God's willing to forgive us, but we got to do something. We got to act by faith and believe that God will take care of that. And you say, well, if I go ahead and tell, they'll lock me up. So, I mean, which one would you rather have? That's right. I get free of the things of, of sin and, and death. You say, well, it's a death sentence. No, it's a life sentence. That's right. That's right. <laughs> We're talking about that which is of life. He said, therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness, those things even that comes out of our mouth that we think we are religious. Yeah. Huh? If we think, well, let's bridle our tongue if they, then, then unless we know of certain things. <laughs> he said, therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, Amen. because who is the light? Right. Jesus Amen. is that light. Amen. He knows it all. You know, when we read the word of God and we look and Jesus said, he knew what was on their hearts. He even knew the things they were thinking. He was there in the crowds and he knew what things might be upon their hearts and on their minds and he knew how to answer that. That's right. And so he said, so it will be heard in the light and that which you have spoken in the ear in closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Yeah. You know, so there's nothing secret with God. Mm -hmm. Now if we may keep them among ourselves, you know, somebody... Well, oh boy, I used to work with it. We used to say, don't breath it. No, you know, this right, yeah. don't breath it. Don't breath it anywhere. I'm going to tell you something, but don't breath it. Yeah. We got to wait, you know, on it. So anyhow, he said, <laughs> and I say to you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill uh, the body. 
you, we've got to live for Christ no matter what. Uh, we've yeah. got to leave. He said, be not my friends. That's right. Be not afraid of them that kill the body and after that you have no more that they can do. So after that, that's all they, that's all, that's all they can do is this body. So what? where does life contain? How do we look at it? Well, we know God has given us this natural life. Yeah. We have a soul and we have a spirit, but that's not the end of this thing. Mm -hmm. Saved or lost, it's not this right here. It's not the end of this thing. Right. We've got a soul which God has given us, and it shall return exactly. unto Him who gave it to us. We're going to give an answer what we have done in this life. It may be short, it may be long, and it may be in between. But still, yet we're going to all give an account of the deeds. That what body we've done it in, in the deeds of the body, right. whether they be good or bad. Are we in the body of life or are we in the body of death? Right. Apostle Paul said, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Right. He knew where he, now he was religious. He was. Oh, he right. was what he thought was working for God and zealous for God, and he persecuted the church. In as much in his testimony, he said, I wasted the church till he come to what? The light. When he come to that light, it was revealed that it, what he was doing, that he was doing it in the wrong direction, just as he had been following after the Pharisees and all of these things. He said of those, he said, I was chief. Yeah. He said, I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisee. He said, I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. And he said, listen, the day he was that of Abraham and all of those things. And he thought, qualified him in being a good person and going to heaven, he thought he was going to make it. That's right. He said, in keeping the law, he said, I'm blameless. That's right. So what did he need? He needed Jesus. And on the road to Damascus, the light appeared and he found Jesus or Jesus found him. And he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Why kickest thou against the bricks? Why are we always going against the word of God? Those things which we think in the doctrines of men and how that we look and see and the value of life, what we hold to and what we hold so dear that is here in this life and this thing that we have can be good if we'll follow right. and have that eternal life and follow after God as we'll read in the scriptures here that we need to put the kingdom of God and the things of heaven first and the rest of this will be added unto yeah. us. So he said, don't, he said, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. So we need to be reminded from time to time, and maybe in this time that we're living, we see the things that are mounting for us in this life as living a Christian life. There's nothing new. The persecution's been there, yeah. is there, and will always be there. That's right. There's one thing that the Word of God warns us and tells us that if we live godly, we shall suffer persecution. That this world hates Jesus Christ. You say, oh, then the world might look and somebody may be viewing this video that's not a Christian. Somebody could look at this video and say, I don't hate Jesus Christ. If we're not for him, we're going to be against him. We're anti-Christ. If you're not on the side of Christ and worshiping God through Christ, you're against him. Amen. I say, well, I don't like that. I believe I'll just persecute against you and just fulfill the word. That's right. Um, they hated Paul when he had a change. They hated Silas when he had a change. They hated the apostles of, of Christ, all of them, and they wanted to destroy. They did not want this truth to go out into the world because they was afraid that they would have to make a change. Yeah. You know why our family members, our neighbors, our friends do not want to hear them because they have to make a change. They think, just as I used to think, I, no different, I thought I was a pretty good person. But you come to the point to realize there is none good, no, not one. We've all sinned and come short of 
the glory of God and the only remedy for sin is Jesus Christ. Right. And then we can have life. We talk about the value of life and the sanctity of life. And people say, I'm living a good life. You're not living any kind of life. You're living in death if we don't have Jesus Christ. You're dead in trespasses and sin. I don't care how many homes and money and how many this and that we've got. Unless we've got Jesus Christ, we have nothing. And even what we've got belongs to God. He said that he owns everything. As David one time put it in this perspective, he said, my father owns the cattle of a thousand hills. Yeah, right. He owns it all. He said, whether we live, whether we die, we are the Lord. Amen. Amen. Lost or saved. And so, the value of life. And he said, but he said, don't be afraid of them that kill the body. They're going to persecute you. Yeah. If you preach Jesus Christ, sing Jesus Christ, live Jesus Christ, and testify of Jesus Christ, they will persecute you. That's right. And I'm not just saying we go along and say, oh, how I love Jesus. Uh -huh. Rather, there's some things that people should see our minds and know how that we live. We ought yeah. to be able uh, to discern the conversation sometimes when we're out of our social gathering in church. Amen, huh? What are they saying? What are they talking about? Uh -huh. Have they just left Jesus inside a church wall? Mm -hmm. And then when we go outside, it's whatever. Say whatever, do whatever. We ought to be able to listen to the conversation. It ought to be godly. Right. It ought to be holy. It ought not be against Christ, but whatever it is, he said, be ready to give an answer of the hope that lies within us. What is our hope? The hope of this world is that we're going to make the world better. It's going to be a better place. Brother, there is no better place for this world. This world is coming to destruction, right. both in the spiritual and the natural. Right. Right. That at the coming of the Lord, he said it shall melt with a fervent heat. Right. Come on, so if you're planning and building up and laying up our treasure here, either death's going to find you and everything you got's going to belong to somebody or someone's else. But if a man gained the whole world, all the value that we can look and see that seems like everybody wants everything, they want it all. And they don't want nobody else to have anything. Brother, if you gain the whole world and yet lose your own soul, what will it profit you? Where's your life? The life, if it's in these things, and if it in this life, only we have Christ, you're a man most right. miserable. Yeah, right. I'm not just living this life to have it here in this life. Yeah, right. What God can give me in this life. And if I pray, God make me this and help me to have fame and give me all this. Help me, and if I do that, I'm a man most miserable. Amen. Amen. But I want to worship God, testify yeah. of God, preach of God, sing of God for eternal life. Right. Over there, get as many to be able to come and rejoice with me yeah. that we're on our road to heaven. Amen, Amen. That we're in the kingdom of God. Yeah. Some are waiting for the kingdom, looking for the kingdom, and I feel sorry for yeah. them because we're in the kingdom of God. Huh? Yeah. Let's move on. Or I can get a little bit ahead of myself here. <laughs> uh, ahead of God, I guess I should say. So, but them that kill it, and after that, they have no more they can do. Then you're all you're off into eternity, and all oh, listen today. What does he? He said, "But I will forewarn you whom have whom you shall fear." Christ is telling us who we should fear. Which one do we have more fear of? Do we have more fear of this life than what we have right now? I'm talking about. This old heart and everything that's within us of this flesh and how that we have and we feel and do all of these things. Do we have so a fear of somebody coming along and killing us? Well, the natural thing is we don't like pain, that's for sure. 
But which one do we fear more? If we have the testimony of Christ and listen to that, it comes to us that we would deny Christ and the Lord and of the Holy Ghost, brother, and we're told that we'll let you live. Which one are you going to choose? We have to make that decision. That's right. We have to make that decision. Yeah. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath ki killed, he said, I'm able to kill and make alive. Right. I'm able to destroy and remake and do. He said, fear him that hath, when he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. That's right. He's the one. Nobody else is going to look at James Moore or you, you put your name there and say, you're going off to hell to send you to hell. That's God's decision. That's, right. That's God's power. That's right. And God will not send anyone into hell that has, listen to day, acknowledged his son. That's right. Because he has eternal life. That's right. That has come and has denied this world. As they, as they sing the song, just, you can have the world. But just give me Jesus. Right. And so he hath power to send to hell, to cast into the hell. Yea, I say unto you, yeah. fear him. Right. And we've said it over here over through the years, and we've heard it preached to us, and no doubt many different assemblies have said this scripture that listen to the day that the fear of God yeah. is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy yeah. is understanding. Yeah. Right. When we listen to the day, the, that beginning of fear, when we fear God for our very soul, listen today, because we know that he is able to cast this soul into hell, then we start having some wisdom. That's right. And then we can build upon that wisdom, we can build upon the knowledge, we can receive that instruction and things that we need so that we can have the understanding of what God is wanting to tell us how we should live while we're here in this life. Come on, then, preach this. And, are, and are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? Mm -hmm. God knows everything that he's made. He knows where it's at. He knows where it falls. That's right. And he, but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Mm -hmm. What controls you? Who is the head of the church? <laughs> He knows all about which one. If Jesus is not the, our head, listen then, which one is? Right. What, what religion is and all of this. But he said, fear not, therefore, you are uh, more value, value than many sparrows. You're more value than that. God looks at us that has a soul. Yeah, that's right. Animals do not have souls. They don't get <laughs> That's the reason. And I'll not get into that. But anyhow, we've got a soul. God breathed into us and we became a living soul. Also, I say to you, whosoever shall confess me before men, there's the thing that God's not going to sin if we confess him before men. We have to, he said, if you're ashamed to confess me, it's what he says here, before it, 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 the Father and the Holy Angels, before men, if we're ashamed to say I love Jesus, if we're ashamed to say I'm on my way to heaven because of Christ. Or if we say, well, I don't need Christ. Matter of fact, I don't want Christ. And some men maybe would say I, they even hate Christ. Yeah. He said, no, you're not if they hated me. You say, well, nobody would hate Christ. Oh, yes. Uh, he said, you know, you're not if they hated me. They will also hate you. Right. Because we are supposed to be Christ-like. That's right. Right. Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. It goes both ways. Mm -hmm. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, if we'll ask. Uh, but unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. Amen. If you keep denying that wooing of the Holy Ghost, that Holy Spirit, yeah. brethren, we die without that Spirit because without the Spirit, we're none of His. Right. And brother, if we're none of His, we ain't going there. Right. We don't have eternal life, but we have that death right. that abides upon us. And He said the soul 
that sinneth, it shall, it shall die. Right. And so listen today, all of this of which is of the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. That's blaspheming the Holy Ghost, denying the Holy Ghost, because he comes and woos us, because God, the Holy Spirit, is here upon the earth, wooing us and telling us and to guide us and direct us. And if we don't want him, we reject him. You're rejecting Christ mm -hmm. and you're rejecting God. You've died in that state. Right, right, right. Uh, there's neither forgiveness in this world nor the world to come. No, no, no. And so let's move on. He said, and when they bring you into the synagogue, into the magistrates and powers, all that can be tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, look at it. They come this or the day. They may come because of our message today or the one next Sunday or two weeks from now. As things, brother, it's progressing quick. They may bring you before the powers and the magistrate because they're saying you don't love these people. Oh, God loves us all. And as Jim was teaching this morning, we love those because we were once sinners. We may have done a different sin. We may have been greater than something else. But nevertheless, we've all sinned. But the good part about it is God has forgiven us of our sins. And that's all we ask, that we quit what we're doing and we become good soldiers for Jesus Christ. Brother, that we lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us and let us run this race. And brother, if you'll join us today in this race, I don't believe we got too awful much more to run. No. <laughs> and you say, well, they don't deserve the end. Christ goes in with a message on that too yeah. about the penny who That's gets right. it at the first or the last. And listen, today you'll receive the same reward. That's right. All right. And so when they bring you into the synagogues to the back of the cow, take no thought how or what you shall answer or what you shall say. Well, I need to contemplate upon this. No, you don't. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is within you and He knows. But well, listen today, if we're listening to the Holy Spirit, He will tell us what to say. That's right. We should have something upon our heart and upon our mind that He will come out of our tongue, out of our mouth, that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the, who, who's going to tell us? Well, listen, yeah, if, boy, if we speak bad against the Holy Ghost, how's He going to be there to help us when they bring us up? Even if we're in a religion other than that, which is of Jesus Christ, which is salvation, then how can the Holy Ghost help us? And so for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. Yeah. In that time when it comes, not particularly uh, from 12 o'clock to 11 o'clock, 1 to 2 or 4 to 6, it don't make any difference, listen to that, of that time, but in that hour when it comes, that time of temptation, when it comes that time that they bring you forth, it may only last a few minutes, but you're within that hour that is there that they're bringing you before that particular time that, that's been here in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, you may go all of your life not persecuted too heavy, but what if it comes to that hour and say, well, and to this lifetime, it's going to get worse and worse. Yeah. We're seeing it right now. And one of the company said that amongst all of this vast multitude, one of the company said, Master, speak to my brother. Oh, what's the value of our life? Why do we put a speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me? Oh, but sometimes all they listen today is upon them. What's mine? My land, my cars. My bank account, my this, and listen, divide the inheritance. He said to him, man, who made me a judge and divider over you? These things are all going to pass away with a great noise. Uh -huh. So what did he say? He said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. Amen. That's not what it gives us the eternal life. Right, Those things that this is in our name or whatever it might be that we won't even pass on. Brother, listen today. Which one is more important to us? Amen. Is it the things that we have and we've gathered unto ourselves? And he spake a parable unto them saying that the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful mm -hmm. in all kinds. Of stuff, fruits have gathered up, boy. He 
with the rich and he was getting richer and all these things. And he, and he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? Huh? So what am I going to do? Listen to what, let's turn over just a minute into John and hold your place. Turn over in just a minute in John 18. Jesus is before Pilate. John 18, towards the last there, 30, uh, 30, let's start at 33. 18 and 33, then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, and did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? We he disdained being that which was of a Jew. And he said, Thine own nation. He said, Now you the Jewish people and the religion, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and all, anything that grouped in it, he said, Thy own nation and chief priests have delivered thee unto me. Your own people has brought you to me. Yeah. What hast thou done? Then and Jesus answered, My kingdom. So if we're looking that God is on, on things of what we possess and they, brother, we ought to make sure we're in the kingdom of God first. Right. Seek ye first the That's kingdom right. of God right. and its righteousness. And brother, all of these other things will be added to us. And listen today, Jesus answered and said, he said, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then the situation that he was in. All right? Then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the uh, to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Right. It's not of that. Mm -hmm. Pilate looking on him and saying, your own people, you men uh, thrown aside, you men deserted by your own people, by your own nation. And listen, Pilate could not see that this kingdom and many people today cannot see this kingdom of God because it's something they want to be tangible. They want to be able to touch it, want to be able to possess it. That's right. huh? But he said, with our patience, we possess ye your soul. Amen. Amen. By, listen today, being transformed, being transformed, Bladed and moved out of this old power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Uh, so he said, it's not of this world that I should be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. And Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am the king. You're saying I'm a king, and he is a king. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. One of the problems is that Pilate did not know that he was a king. That's right. And brother, most of this world does not know that Jesus our Lord is king of kings uh, right. and lord of lords Amen. to the glory of the Father. And he said, Jesus, thou sayest I am a king. To this end was I born and for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of, of the truth heareth my voice. Amen. He, what does it do but through his voice he, he directs us he tells us listen today don't worry about what your ground is bringing forth it's good if we've got provision for us and raiment for ourselves then we ought to be glad and we ought to thank God for what we've got that's here but most of all we ought to thank God for the salvation of our soul that he moved us out of this old power of darkness that's getting bigger and bigger and brother it's getting darker and darker it is getting further and further away from the kingdom of God yeah, that's right. uh, that's right. but we see it we see the light of that city we see the light of this kingdom mm -hmm. uh, it don't need this sun no. uh, it don't need this moon no, it, don't. it don't need the things that we possess we don't need it why? Because we are in the kingdom of God. God knows about the sparrows. God knows we have need. That we've got to have H2O to drink. And it's got to be clean. Right. He knows, listen today. We've got to have food to eat in the body. 
will deteriorate and dry up and blow away. He knows these things. And he knows how to provide it. Huh? In abundance. Right. We live an abundant life. Right. And so he looks upon us and those things. So he's telling of these things about what we possess and how that is there. And so he tells of this parable of a man that has, the ground has brought forth plenty. So turn with me now, if you will. Go into Timothy, 1 Timothy. Last chapter, 6. Uh, verse 5. What's happened to our world? What's happened to the value of life? What's happened to our worship of God through Jesus Christ? Having the Holy Spirit that he said as many be led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. We listen to God. What to do? And brother, listen today. How that he wants to direct their steps for the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Well, if we're not listening to the Holy Spirit and we get into trouble, then we'll blame God because... We got ourselves into trouble, yeah. not by the Spirit. Let's not blame the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Spirit probably was coming to us, tells, don't go, don't go, don't do, yeah. don't say, huh? Yeah. Don't believe. Don't go off to Jericho. Don't go down there and fall among thieves. If you do, if you go off down there, they'll strip you clothes. They'll leave you half dead. They'll take away what you've learned from the beginning. And he said, you, but God's merciful. Huh? Ruth, listen. Remember your first love. Yeah. Go and do. And all oh, this in the day, verse 5, he said, and Paul's telling Timothy, he said, perverse disputings of men corrupt minds. Mm -hmm. Do you see it today? Yeah. Oh, we see it a long time ago how it happened. We see of all those destruction of people of old. And he said, it's a token of perdition unto them, brother. And he gave us, and we have an example, brother, we can go out not to do those things. He said, remember, Lot's wife. Yeah, that's right. Not to do those things. Don't go running after Baal and the son of Beor. Don't go, go after those things. If we do, but listen today, we soon forget. We soon forget about the perverse things that's going on and the perverse disputings that are happening in our world today of men of corrupt minds and destitute of what? The truth. Right. People say, I have truth. You cannot have truth without Jesus Christ. I don't care what assembly you go to. That's right, you cannot have truth without Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. And if we have the Holy Spirit, he will direct our steps, our minds, and our hearts and what we should be and Amen. how we should even look at the Word of God Amen. and of the truth. And he said, Christ come and he said, for this cause I came out into this world and for that cause of truth he came to show the world. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And he said, if any man will come unto me, I won't cast you out. But I'll give you life. You think you've got life now. And with all the things that we've gathered to ourselves and all the things, listen today, even the person living in the mud hut with a dirt floor can look and say, just, be just as guilty as a person that's living in a palace of gold. That's right. That's right, Ken. It's all the state of the heart. That's right. The and of the mind. That's right, brother. And destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. Kathy always calls it the mud hut syndrome. Mm -hmm. And I've said that here before. We satisfy me. Oh, it's better than being out in the open. Yeah. Huh? Oh, but we look and our neighbor down the road has got a rock floor. Yeah. We accomplish that. We've got to have something more. But you say, well, what about the palace of gold? They've got to have a bigger palace. Yeah. They've got to have more. Exactly. It's always looking and trying to satisfy the pains and the longings of the flesh, knowing that even the dirt floor hut is going to perish right along with the gold palace is going to burn up. Right. Where is our contentment? Huh? Supposing that gain is godliness from such, withdraw thyself. Huh? He tells us to move away from that type of doctrine. Yeah. But godliness with contentment That's right. is great gain. That's right. Love God. Huh? 
how much we love God. Because no matter what you've got in possession in this world, is not going to be able to compare with eternal life. Right. But we think that we what we've got and possess in this life, if we can just get more and more and more, brother, it's nothing to be compared to. No, but godliness uh, with contentment. That's right. Be happy with what we got. Uh, but uh, Paul said, be, with food and raiment, be there with what? Content. Content. That's right. Uh, for we brought nothing into this world. Job said, naked came I into this world, and naked I'm going to leave. That's right. That's right. Uh, so he said, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. That's right. You don't own anything. Those that grab and give and listen today and even strive and work hard for and all they've got the palace of gold, do you ain't a taking it out when you go. No. And neither are you the dirt poor of the mud mm -hmm. You're not going to take it. It belong, all belongs to God. Amen. People do not want to acknowledge it, but godliness contentment is great gain. Oh, well, well, the next one down here, I guess it said, having food and rabbit, let us be there with what? Content. Yeah. <laughs> I've quoted it before, even got to it now. So, but they that, that will be rich fall into temptation. The more you got, temptation comes. And a snare to many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Yeah. Which one do you want? Huh? Both of them. Which one do we want? Do we want eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord? Do we want godliness with contentment? What you've got. That's right. It's not wrong to be rich. No. But we better be content with what we've got. That's right, James. What we do with what we've got That's story. makes a difference yeah. in God's eyes. That's right. For the love, here we go, for the love of money, it's not money, but it's the love of it. Yeah. And boy, do we have it today yeah. in our society. Oh, that's right. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Oh, that's right. If we come down to war, and these rumors of wars are all because of money. Yeah. And if it even takes place, it will be because oh, of money. Yeah. Because the word of God says it so, and I believe it. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. It will make you move away from the faith in Christ yes, right. and from God. And have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, this is where he was reminding us. Mm -hmm. But thou, O man of God, Flee these things. Yeah, yeah. Stay away from them. Yeah. Don't go after them. Don't just try to keep on getting more and more. Be content. Right. If you get more, <laughs> that's all right. Yeah. But be content. Follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Mm -hmm. Well, you're talking about living a good life here. If we're godly. But God is faith, love, patience, and meek. Fight the good fight of faith. Believe on Christ. Right. Believe that when I leave all this behind, that whoever gets it, or if it goes to ruin and a tree grows up through the middle of the palace, let it be. Right. You ain't worried about it. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. That's the key thing. Lay hold on eternal life. Make sure that you know where you're heading to. That because you got a palace of gold and you put in a million dollars in the plate will not get you there. That's right. Amen. That's not what gets us there. Amen. Nor being dirt poor just because say, well, God's going to shine a light on me a whole lot more because I don't have anything. Nope. Brother, if you got Jesus, you got it all. Right. Uh, get it to her, where unto thou art also called and has has professed a good profession before many witnesses. What did we say over here? In Luke, he says that we got to confess before men. If we don't, 
He's not going to confess us before the Father when he comes with his holy yeah. angels. Yeah. So we confess before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things, makes us alive, who quickens it, it gives us life. And before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. Yeah. We just read it over there. He witnessed a good confession. He told Pilate, though Pilate had, he looked and said, don't you know I have power to let you live? Or listen, I can kill you, let you die. He said, thou hast no power except the Father would give it to you. That's right. uh, you don't have no power. Mm -hmm. uh, you think you do. That's right. We think we're in a high state. We think we're in office because of this or that. Brother, listen, today God sets them up and brings them down as he see fit. And so we are to give glory to God. No matter what state we're in, we are to be giving God glory. If we hold a high office, let's use that office, brother, for the glory of God. Amen. That's right. But I'm afraid so many are for the glory of themselves. That's right. That thou keep this commandment without spot and unrebukable, how long? Until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep this commandment without spot. To do what? Give a good witness and a confession before men. Keep this commandment uh, without spot, unrebukable. Somebody say, oh, he says he's a Christian and look what he's doing. You know what that's called? Hypocrite. Yeah. We're going to heaven because of this. And brother, listen today, there's not a one ever went, will go, or ever will go unless we confess Jesus Christ Amen. to be the king. He said that unless we come with what? A broken heart, a contrite spirit, and make a mouth confession unto salvation, believing that God hath raised him from the dead, calling upon the name of the Lord. And he said, Thou shalt be saved. Amen. Amen. Unless we do that, we ain't going. Unless we confess Jesus Christ, and we're not ashamed to stand up at the podium no matter how high how, how order we are or how low of order we are and confess Jesus Christ. Amen. You say, well, some people will hate me. Yes, they will. The world will hate you. But oh, we can sit back and sing how I love Jesus. Right. Knowing that God's looking down and smiling yeah. upon us and say, oh, how I love my children. That's right. Huh? Oh, the Cadmus used to sing a song. I believe it was the Cadmus. Why won't my children praise me? Mm -hmm. uh, why will they not confess me, King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Mm -hmm. uh, why won't they do that? Where we've turned far away, the value of life is only in the things that we possess and whatever we can gain, and who knows us? Mm -hmm. uh, That's right. First thing here. That's right, there. Which in his times. He shall show who is he'll, he'll, then he's going to show in his time when he comes he's going to show what who is the blessed and only potentate king of kings and lord of lords That's right. he's going to show him he's going to show all of this world exactly. and he said every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess that he is the king of kings and the lord of lords Amen. who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Yeah. Let's go back now to our lesson here this morning. And so he gave forth this parable then. The ground of a certain rich man, verse 16, brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Mm -hmm. Well, if we'll just first ask of the Holy Spirit, he'll say, well, You've got a whole lot, and he probably give it some other different direction than he should have went. Instead of tearing his barns down and building build bigger barns and saying, So take thy ease. Yeah. Uh, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. Well, maybe somebody else could use some of that. Right. <laughs> and he said, This will I do. I will pour, pull down my barns, build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my gifts. Yeah. Good as man. If I, I just. He to him. It's mine. Yeah, do I'll do what I want to, and I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Mm -hmm. 
Ain't nothing going to happen to that. But you know, it's so who, who's rich towards God? Yeah. Who is rich toward God? Okay. Yeah. So then, you know, it's it's not that we don't. You know, He said, make no provision. But it's not that we. He said, look to the ain't. Look at the, to the old sluggard. Look yeah. at the ain't. He gathers up. He stores up for the water. winter. You know, I mean, if somebody says big storm coming while Walmart be wiped out of milk and bread right yeah. off off the bat, it don't take long, brother. Everything's good, and that's all right. You hey, if a big snowstorm comes and all the power goes out, you want something to eat, something to drink. You want some conveniences that are there in case of disaster that come. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, I keep a little bit of gasoline around in case the power goes out and put in the generator. Yeah. So much stuff in the refrigerator. There's nothing wrong in those no. things. You say, well, James, you're just justifying yourself. Well, if I am, please help me. But listen today, but God, listen today, I don't depend on those things. I know that all of those things, and, and what good is it? If you're sick, or you, you, they ain't going to do you no good once you die. No. But you still make it while it's there, while you're alive. Here. He said, take thy ease, drink, and be merry. He's talking about in, also in the spiritual realm. What have we got? What are we hoarding to ourselves? Just for this life? Mm -hmm. That we forget about God? That we put that before, that we work and work and we put aside, that we'll say, nothing's going to happen to it? Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's look at some of the nations that were rich. Mm -hmm. Huh? Where are they at now? Syria. Fine cities. Gold. Uh, things was going along where we agreed with their religions and stuff. No, they were going along pretty good. But look at them now. That's right. Uh, you look at Ukraine. Mm -hmm. They were going along pretty good. Now look at it. People, many thousands are dead and buildings burned up and blowed up and it seems like we want more. Uh, look at us. That's right. Uh, when, when wars come, disasters, lives, and things, and people has pulled to themselves, and we look at it, we work 24-7, and we go down the road, and we have a car wreck. Mm -hmm. We're paralyzed for life, and it's laying there. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with it? That's right. Or even more, that you die. All of that goes to somebody. That's right. Somebody else. You know, what you've worked for. Mm -hmm. But God said unto him, Thou fool! That's right. This night, thy soul shall be required of thee. What, what did you do for me? Yeah. Huh? What did you do with all that I allowed you to do? What have you done with these things? Then whose uh, shall those things be which thou hast provided? Who, who are they going to be now? You said it's yours. Well, whose are they now? That's right. Your soul come into question and now it's there. You think it's never going to come and our people look and think we're going to live on forever and ever without God? No, you're just going to die on and on forever right. without Amen. God. Amen. Because unless you've got Jesus, you do not have life. That's right. In Him is life and that life can be more abundant Amen. while we're here. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So how are we rich toward God? Well, we how are we rich? Well, you say, the more I work for God, the more I'll get. That's not the way either. Mm -hmm. He said, he that overcometh, in 21 and 7 of Revelation, he that overcometh shall inherit how much? Always. Always. Yeah. And I shall be their God and they shall be my son. Amen. So we're rich towards God because we have his son that God provided us a way when there seemeth no way to be able to give us eternal life because God knows the ways of flesh and he knows that all men are yet but flesh and knows that we go against God and God made us a way that we could become righteous towards him and in his eyes and the only way we can is to confess Jesus Christ who is the author and the finisher of of our faith. Amen. Amen. And so then, who layeth up that treasure for himself? How are we rich for it? Because we have Christ. And then we have that direction. We have God directs us while we're here upon his footstool. While we're in his kingdom. We're in his kingdom. Yeah. We go outside of the kingdom. We're back into the world. Amen. Amen. Huh? 
So we go outside of the kingdom. You can walk in amongst the, the thieves and the, listen, and all of the things that it's all this world and then the other religions, you can walk up, still be in this kingdom. Yeah. No matter where you go, you're upon God's footstool upon this earth. You're in this kingdom. Right. And one of these days when he comes back, as we preached about here, when he comes back, he's going to deliver this kingdom uh, up to the Father. Yeah, that's right. Need to be inside, don't you? Yeah, yeah. In other words, we get in the circle. Right. You need to get in the circle. Yeah. You need to get in the kingdom of God. You need to get in the family of God. Otherwise, listen, today you're in the family of the world. You're in that body of death. Right. The only ones in life is in that circle, in that realm of God, in this kingdom. And you can, he, you, you can take him with you wherever. And he said, I'll go before you. Out there, if he wants you to testify somewhere that you've gone somewhere now you testify of the Lord, that Holy Spirit will still be with you. Yeah, he said, I'll never leave you. Right. I'll never forsake you, but Lord, with you all the way, even in the world, the end of the world. And the end of the world's coming and people, well, we think it's this way or that way, brother. It's in the hands of God. God's the one that is in charge. And he said unto his disciples, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. He's pretty plain. He told his disciple, he amongst all the multitude that was there, he spoke to his disciples. What? First. That's right. And he said, Call for your life what you shall eat, neither for the body what you shall put on. The life is more than meat, mm -hmm. and the body is more than rain. That's right. That's right. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. And God feedeth them, how much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you with, with uh, taking thought can add to his stature one cubit? You can say, well, how, well what about, uh, so, some people say, boy, he, he's an awful big man. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about in height, I'm talking about the status of life. Yeah. Huh? In God's eyes, you the, the, listen, we, we come and you're not no bigger or taller than anybody else. Oh, all right, who can add one statue? If you then not be able to do that which is the is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Yeah. Consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Let's compare Solomon. Solomon, brother, he built houses and palaces and had all kinds of riches and stuff because he did not ask for it. He wanted the wisdom. And God said, because you didn't ask for it, I'm going to give you these things. But still yet, God looked at the lily of the valley. He said, man, that, that's beautiful. All that riches, he wasn't arrayed with all of his robes and silver and gold and probably crowns and possessions that he was, he was not ready. God didn't look upon them with any more glory than these lilies, than any one of these. If then God so clothe the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast in the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek ye not what you shall eat or what you shall drink, need ye be of a doubtful mind. How am I going to do this? God said, I'll make a way. He, he'll, he'll take care of it. For all these things do nations of the world seek after. Look at look us look look what we're all over this world. That's right. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, they were doing the same thing. They were gathering together. How much more powerful can we be? How much more money and how this and that. And when man's in charge of it, it's gonna fall. Yeah, it has to. It's gonna fall. And your father knoweth that you have need of these things. But the nations out here, all they think, unless our leaders do this and leaders do that, we will starve to death. Not of, even in the natural. But what about the spiritual? That's right. Uh, these, they, they're not eating of anything. They're starving to death out here in the world. Yeah. They've been starving for years. Yeah. They eat the natural food. They've been eating it up. Yeah, they're pulling up sorry. Huh? Yeah, full and starving. It's like eating rabbit. If you're lost out in the wilderness, you starve to death if you've done the rabbit. Ain't no fat on it. No. Not enough. Not enough nutrients. You can have all you eat 
over and over and over to die and eat and have all the abundance of rabbits you could eat. And your Father knoweth that you have need of these things, but rather, what? Seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's right. Fear not, little flock, for it is the Father, your Father's good pleasure. Here's what he wants to give you, is the kingdom. That's right. That's everything. Take care that you're in this kingdom. That's right. Take care that you're in it. And God will, you know, if, if we're in a need of light, God will, if he can take care of the lilies of the valley, mm -hmm. if he can take care of the sparrows, stuff, God can help us. He will. And he will. He'll make us away. He'll be there for us. Sell that you have. I mean, he's not talking about if you've got stuff saved up and all, you know, all your things that you want. He's not telling you to do it, but all of that which is against God. Get rid of it. That's right, man. Get rid of it. And give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. That's right. Put your treasure in a place. Store it up. Have your name written down in the Amen. Lamb's book of life. Amen. Amen. Have, you know, those in that book of remembrance that's yeah. there. <clears throat> Sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in, he in the heavens that faileth not, which this, that's not going to pass away. Mm. For no thief approacheth nor moth corrupt. Here's the whole key to it all. Verse 34, the last one. For where your treasure is, right. there will your heart be also. Amen, brother. What kingdom do you live in? That's right, Jay. That's in right. this kingdom, he doesn't need our potatoes and beans and money and raiment and all. You don't need to have no need of that in this kingdom. Huh? No. It's where our heart, that's where our treasure is there is eternal life. That's right. right. Uh, and he's, then he looks and sees out here all that. He even takes care of the world. Sure he does. Huh? You say, well, then God won't let me starve to death. That's not what he's saying. There's little babies that I believe are with God, you know, and they've done neither good nor, and they starve to death. Yeah. Die. That's so right. you can't use that, huh? Because of things he's not talking about of the natural things. He provides the natural. He yeah. does. Uh, and, and then when our nation, we, we see when food production goes down, why is it going down? Because God gives us the desires of our heart. Mm -hmm. And if we think we're our own, he said, you're not your own. That's he right. was bought with a price. And so he'll give us the desires of our heart, but that's all we want. God will say, well, then, if you if you think you can, you know, Maybe. do this or do it, won't you go ahead and do it? If you think you can make that bean grow, and if I don't want that bean to grow, it's yeah, not going to grow. Yeah, grow. I, I won't send the water for it to grow. I will hold the rain, the natural rain, away from it also. Yeah, but, you know, if that's the way that you feel about it. Yeah. It's like that man who said, uh, you know, my trees and my fruits and everything, I'll just build bigger barns. Mm -hmm. Well, God said, tonight thy soul will be required. Where are you at? <clears throat> Where are you at now? Right. So we look at it. We've got to look at it in the spiritual eye and have the spiritual and hear from God. That's right. Get in whatever into this kingdom of God. Do everything, sell out everything. What's holding us to keep from coming into this kingdom? Amen. What's keeping us out? That's right. What do we don't want to give up like the rich young ruler? You know, what do I need to give up? Or the lawyer that says, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? The rich young ruler said, what must I do? You know, what do I, what do I lack yet to have eternity? Yeah. Pick up the cross. Well, got to acknowledge Jesus Christ. That's right. If we've done everything that we've looked, then acknowledge Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's right. And he went away sorrowful. That's right. Don't want to acknowledge him. May have to live a different life. There might be something come up that I just can't live. You hear people say, well, I'd go to church if I could just live. I'd get saved if I could live it can't live it without Jesus. Yeah. And you can't start living without Jesus. Right. And you can't live it without Jesus. Right. So, let's Amen. live for Jesus. Amen, brother. Let's be reminded of these things and not be carried away with every wind and wave of doctrine that tells us it's all right for this and that. You ever hear the doctrines, all oh, the more that you got, and God will increase you this way, that way, just make sure you send me $100, $50, yeah. 
if they want to hit everybody, because not everybody's got a thousand to send them, but they'll hit the ones that's got a thousand to send them, but it's all right if you send me 50, if that's all you can afford, because they want whatever anybody can give you, to give them. Yeah, or sow the seeds. Yep. What kind of seeds they sow? That's right, they are. They're sowing the seeds. Yes, May God bless you. I'm through. Uh, good to be here today.